We're down to the last few 20 Sienna plushies. Go get one while you can. And if they are all sold out, I will hold up my end of the bargain that I put up on Twitter. I won't say it out loud. I might hide the text somewhere on the screen. All right, enjoy. My ass, Minotaur, the first cowboy. I said this to my girlfriend and she just started listing synonyms for bad at me. Who would win in a fight between Aang and Korra isn't even a question. Because Aang would be like, I would never fight one of my future lives. And Korra would not hesitate before sucker punching a 12 year old. Me, my outline, making everything up as I write. Has this been done before? Tumblr, if you call me out like this, we're going to have to talk. Shorty got them problematic jeans, boots with the erm. She got the whole club canceling her. Who am I supposed to invite to my wedding when I have like three friends and dislike most of my family? Okay, hear me out. Dogs and cats in fancy clothes. <gasps> my God, you're right. Jesus comes from a shortening of the Hebrew version of the name Joshua, while Christ simply means the anointed one. To make this clear to modern Christians, I propose a new Bible translation where Jesus is referred to as Oily Josh. There's something really unsavory about Oily Josh and his two teenage friends. Ah, Oily Josh and the Greasy Boys! How do you giggle in French? Wee wee baguette! We blocked let him know that you love him. Of course I love him! Look at the chunky boy! Look at his face! In 1930, Helen Adelaide Shelby patented an apparatus for obtaining criminal confessions. The police put the suspect into a darkened chamber where they're confronted by a human skeleton with glowing red eyes that question them with a voice transmitted from the interrogator behind it through a megaphone in its, in its mouth. The camera concealed in the skull was to record the confessions. I'm sorry, what? Confess your sins to the crime, skeleton, yeah! Peter Parker, also known as the popular superhero Spider-Man, is roughly 16 to 17 years old, meaning he was born in either 2001 or 2002. I mean, with this iteration of what we're going with, sure, why not? Contrary to popular belief, this places him firmly in the Gen Z category, rather than the millennial category that many place him in. By extrapolating this information, we can conclude that Peter Parker not only knows what a furry is, but constantly has to grapple with the fact that his spider-centric identity is in fact his persona. In this essay, I will- Orange juice is the superior beverage because it makes your tongue feel like you ate a bunch of ants, which reminds me of my childhood when I put ants in my mouth and eat them, except this time it tastes good too. Hey, OP, I think you're probably allergic to citrus. Is this not what OG is supposed to make your tongue feel like? No, it's not. Hey, can I get a cursed back about space? If you go there, you die. Well, if you go to Earth, you also die. One of my least favorite mental illness things is hungry but don't feel like eating. And it's companions, hungry but all the food in the house is illegal, hungry but can't make anything, and hungry want to eat but why bother. Also the ADHD friend, hungry but unaware of hunger because current activity is too captivating. Or hungry but I'll get to it later. Definite not hungry, nope, but upon forcing oneself to eat something, discovering that the food vanished in 30 seconds, and the pervasive feeling of ickiness all vanished, what the fuck? Or my least favorite, hungry but moving is against the law. Okay, but seriously, the most valuable thing I learned doing a master's degree with depression, anxiety, and ADHD was to change my things I'm bad at list to things I can't do on my own. Stop thinking of them as things I could do if I tried hard enough, and accept that I can't accomplish them by effort and willpower alone. They're genuine neurocognitive deficits. And if I need to do the thing, then just like a blind person reading or a mobility impaired person going up a story in a building, I need to find a different method. I'm bad at working on long-term projects without an imminent deadline or someone breathing down my neck. Okay, let's change that. I can't work on long-term projects without an imminent deadline or someone breathing down my neck. So let's create an imminent deadline and recruit neck breathers. Find a sympathetic professor who will agree that three weeks before the due date, they expect me to show them my preliminary notes and bibliography. Get a friend I trust to block off an hour to sit with me and keep asking, are you working on your project? Write a blog post about my progress and arrange to trade papers and proofread them with another student. Accept your limitations and learn to leverage them instead of buying the neurological fairy tale that they'll go away if you just try hard enough. Okay, back to the stupid. Does anyone else have that one tree that they walk past that has one branch that hangs across the path and consistently whacks you in the face? Yeah, oh, damn it, not again. 
Oh yes, I love the Star Wars. Pew pew, lightsaber, Dark Vader, and Luke Skyscraper, and Obi Wan Kenobi, and R two B two, and three PCO, and Tobaka. I love Star Trek. This physically hurts to read, and I'm not even a Star Wars fan. For whatever reason, you suddenly gain godlike powers of control over the universe. What's the first thing you do? I straight up get rid of carbon. Carbon, the chemical element upon which all life forms are based. That's the bit.